having to say unpleasant things to friends when they're not doing good things. Yeah. So it's like we, we don't want to judge other people. Yeah. So that's like one of the one of the things when you, you don't judge. But if you particularly like Sangha members that they're not behaving right and you, you it's we want our faults pointed out to us. So it's like you you're being arrogant. Yeah. Or you're being stupid. You're being selfish. Rather than just go rather than just being nice, just relying on your good nature to get through the situation. You know? So they're like slagging off someone and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see your point of ego. You're backbiting. Stop it. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yep. Yeah, so you're not being too tolerant of what's actually harmful behavior. But, you, you know, that requires people being on the path and they recognize, they acknowledge, they can distinguish what is harmful and good behavior. Yeah, we don't want to be it depends how depends how many friends but it depends how many friends you want to have. The, the role as you get further down, if you're practicing guru yoga, the, the role of the the guru, for example, is just to point out your faults. And this is a real friend, not someone who's just going to agree with your delusional self. Yeah, but it takes a bit of backbone to have someone pointing out your faults all the time. And you need to be, you know, quite happy inside yourself on the path and, you know, recognizing, you, well, you can't recognize, we all have blind spots. No? Even in our eyes, we have physical blind spots and we have spiritual blind spots. And that's what we have Sangha and spiritual guide for. You go, yeah, you're getting a bit off track. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to that you don't have to necessarily be confrontational about it. There's skillful ways to do it. You can start talking about someone behind their back. You notice that the person you're talking to saying the sangha just shifts the subject. The usual response to this is you get annoyed. I want to talk about it. I want to and they're like you just move away or go to another room and it's like and it's always just like you're off track you know what I mean you don't have to you don't have to go bang I mean you might do but it be more like you know, just go well what about their point of view but let's say with my friends they usually just like and just look at me <laughs> and then and it's just like oh, yeah, you just and it's an energy just like the inside they're just saying shut up and then it's like you can more like readjust yourself yeah I think that's one of the commitments one of the things that I wanted to that I mentioned about you can discuss what are the commitments. This can be we can have a sense that they're um, some kind of restrictions. Yeah, the word commitment. So, like you can do it as a thought experiment, but you could try it as well, and that is. Stop meditating. Stop following your commitment for a week. See how it makes you feel. Yeah. Engage wholeheartedly in the non-essentials and see how it makes you feel. Ignore other people, some people, and get really close to others and see how it makes you feel. When you meet people, just slag them off. See how it makes you feel. 
Yeah. Talk about other people behind their back. When you meet someone, just all just talk about someone behind their back. Slag them off, slag them off, slag them off. See what it makes you feel. Totally go into Twitter for hours and just watch the news and just be concerned and nosy about what other people are. See how it makes you feel. Just ignore your main delusion. Now, if you're angry, just get angry. Just follow, just get angry at everyone whenever you feel like it. See how it makes you feel. Really, really get into the fact that you haven't made it yet. And see how it makes you feel. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. These are not moral things you do or don't do. They're experimental suggestions from an enlightened being go try this so just think of it the same way as diets yeah the doctor says stop eating sugar because you're hyperactive stop giving the kids coke and he goes stop drinking lots of sugar and coffee and you go, no, don't tell me what to do. I'm, I've got free will. It's, do you keep it's, it's not a moral question. It's not a question for anyone. A doctor couldn't care less if you come in again. It's like, come to the doctor and you come the next month and you go, I've still got all these hyperactive problems. Are you still drinking Coke and coffee? Yes. It's like, <laughs> you're a moron. It's like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> it's like, I told you what you could try. Doesn't mean it would work, right? Again, so it's like you experiment. And this is the thing, everybody's different. Yeah? Some people can drink, like my friend can drink a bottle of whiskey and about 10 pints of beer, and he's functioning fairly well. Yeah, if I die, if I, no. <laughs> that's just, I used to have four pints to be like, you know, we have it like, you know, sometimes on different stages of the moon. I remember, you know, can drink 10 pints, but it's absolutely smashed. Yeah. Big bottle of whiskey, and, well, it's just like no problem. You even notice that he's been you're like, oh, maybe a bit drunk. Yeah, so we're all different, right? So we have to try all these on and see how they affect us. And then if, if you figure out that sitting slagging someone off all day doesn't make you feel good, and you keep doing it, to quote Bill Hicks, you're a moron. <laughs> That's all. You're not bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not a, there's no moral thing here. So we all have a goal, which is to awaken. And then you see if this affects your meditation, if it affects. That's how you try it. You never believe Buddha. 